to eat local, in season, we want you to cook at home, <laughs> in a perfect world. But the reality is, what we're finding is that that's not happening, okay? What I love about Elizabeth is that she has gone to Staff and New Leaf and Whole Foods and Trader Joe's and Safeway and you know, she's, she's been there. And she understands that you might have to go and get something to eat there. So she's going to talk about a variety of things, but, but how do you choose wisely when you have certain choices, right? Mm -hmm. So this, this is a great um, talk when you have to have healthy food on the go, which I think is really important to touch upon. Instead of us, you know, as doctors saying, we want you to eat really healthy, <laughs> you know? So does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I really felt like this was a good... Um, person to have in the program because it's it's very reality and meeting us where we are and some days we're just busy so I'm really glad you're here thank you so much for coming thank you yeah. and thank you Michelle and Lita for mm -hmm. for inviting me and thank you all for participating in this challenge it's pretty pretty impressive to see you all here on a beautiful sunny afternoon and um, really taking your health seriously so um, Thank you for the opportunity, and I'm going to talk a little bit today about optimizing your diet, healthy food on the go. Um, here's a little bit of a discussion outline. Um, so I'm going to introduce myself and then um, talk a little bit more about some of the the challenges we face every day when we are like out doing our thing and you know don't always have time to prepare the perfect meal. Um, so. I'll get into that a little bit, and and how do we how do we create strategies for change? Um, because a lot of times, even though we have the best intentions, the biggest challenge is forming new habits and you know really putting those into place. And you know at the end of the day, if we want healthy outcomes, we do, we do need to change our habits. Um, I'm Elizabeth Borelli, and I'm a food writer. Um, this is my new book, Being Delicious Living. It just won uh, Book of the Year for um, independent publishing, so that was something I was really excited about. And I just want everyone to know that as much as I love beans, it's not just about beans. I think the title kind of fools people. It's really about healthy whole foods living. So what does great health mean to you? Anyone? Well, I know for a lot of us, oh, yay, we have, we have someone. <laughs> right. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, and I have a feeling you guys are probably more in touch with that than a lot of people who really are just focused on weight. But it is about so much more than weight. It's about energy. It's about emotion. Um, you know, being able to access your positive emotions, being able to be more in touch with your body when you're in a better state of balance than a lot of us are in because of our, our regular food choices. So we are living right now in a state of um, nutrition confusion. Nine out of 10 people believe they're eating a healthy diet. So when Lita talked about you know, levels, um, or in Michelle as well, I think talked about levels, and it's like a lot of us think we're eating a healthy diet. We're buying the things that say healthy on the label, you know, we're doing low carb or, you know, low fat or whatever it is. So, so we're paying attention to the food we're eating, but still, when we're looking at the statistics, um, the reality is playing out differently. So some, th there's a disconnect there somewhere. And especially when we see, sorry about the little typo there, 30% um, of our current generation of kids is predicted to develop type 2 diabetes by 2030. That's really sobering. Um, and even Alzheimer's, we hear a lot about a lot of the other diet-related diseases, of obesity, um, heart disease. We hear about those all the time, but Alzheimer's now is coming to light as a um, diet-related disease. So there's really, even if you are not overweight, there's a lot of things to pay attention to when it comes to diet. And so, of course, the biggest diet, no surprise here, right? Processed food. What might be a little more surprising is um, take a look at the picture. Take a look at some of these foods, processed food, packaged food, um, but that says Heart Smart on it. Great grains, sounds like a great choice, healthy choice for breakfast. 100% juice, 
apple is on the bottom because, you know, 100% juice could be anything. And by putting the word apple on the bottom, you think it's 100% apple juice, but if, without reading the fine print, you don't know. So anyway, this is a lot of what we're dealing with. These healthy sounding foods, 70% of the food we're eating is packaged, and we're relying on manufacturers to tell us what's healthy and what isn't unless we, you know, do our homework and, and uh, look behind the scenes a little further. So when I'm talking about process, I mean, um, made from refined grains. I'm talking about highly processed, highly refined. So stripped of their fiber products, that wheat products that are stripped of their fiber, and then, you know, cereals um, extruded into all kinds of different flakes and shapes and, and O's, and then um, the nutrients are added back in in synthetic formula. And, you know, those, those look pretty healthy. Often they're high in sugar, high fructose corn syrup, or trans fats. Um, and a lot of them are processed using some of the chemicals that Lita referred to earlier, hormones and antibiotics. Um, and, you know, when you're looking at a processed food, a lot of the times they contain ingredients that you'll never find in your kitchen. So these are, these are the processed foods I'm, I'm really referring to because, of course, bread is a processed food. And I'm not saying that you should never eat bread again. The point is to really, when you do eat packaged foods, really be, you know, informed about what you're eating. So, um, of course, the processed food industry knows that health is a major and weight is a major concern for Americans now. So, rather than trying to make healthier foods, they're just trying to make the foods that they are selling seem healthier. So, um, you know, they, they're able to use food labels like natural and healthy, even in foods that contain high fructose corn syrup because it originated from a natural food ingredient. Um, and then, of course, portion sizes are really another, another thing we need to pay attention to. So unfortunately, the state of um, our, our society right now is that we're, we're eating too much food, too many calories. But even though we're doing that, we're not meeting our daily nutritional requirements. This is even according to the USDA, which is a very conservative um, entity. So if you can see this chart, um, we're only getting 15% of our whole grains, you know, um, less than half of the fruit that we should be eating. Dairy, I don't agree with on this chart, but this is just to give you an example of how we're having, uh, we're, we're consuming double the amounts of, um, of the things we should be avoiding or limiting and less than, you know, about half of the, the nutrients we really need every day. And, you know, then we wonder why is this the case, but how are we learning about nutrition? Nutrition is not being taught in schools and the unbiased um, organizations that are out there like, you know, um, uh, co-ops, groups, advocacy groups that have money to spend on these kinds of things are being totally just, you know, overrun by the processed food industry, big food. Um, and that's where most of the nutrition information that we're receiving every day is coming from. They have the budget. They're out there making their um, ads seem like facts and really pushing this kind of um, eating on our society. And there's, there, there's no counterbalance. So, um, you know, they're, they're making all these health, healthy claims, and most people don't read beyond the, the claims on the front of the package, heart healthy, um, fiber rich, low fat, and a lot, too many times we're just falling into those traps. And we can blame all of this on the 80s, which I thought this was a hilarious <laughs> picture. There's a lot of things we can blame on. There's a lot of things that came out of the 80s. Big hair was only one of them. But, um, you know, when we look at obesity rates, 
uh, obesity rates are, are have skyrocketed since the 80s when they were at 12 to 14 percent, which is where they had been for you know hundreds of years since they were being measured. Suddenly they skyrocketed in the 80s, right around the same time the low fat craze entered our culture, and so suddenly everything was low fat. Well, low fat didn't necessarily mean healthy or low sugar, and so at the same time, high fructose corn syrup started to be subsidized by the government as a really cheap sugar source, much cheaper than regular sucrose, and that started entering into everything. So suddenly food manufacturers found this magic formula where they could say low fat, yet load up on the you know high fructose corn syrup and other inexpensive filler ingredients and have these delicious tasting Snack wells. Does anyone remember snack wells? That's always the example used. These really high calorie, they had, you know, no nutrients in them, but they were low fat. So, and you know, since that time, sugar has really kind of taken over the <laughs> processed food system. Sugar is now in, I believe the, the statistic was like 85% of packaged foods, and that includes everything from, um, like you saw, the spaghetti sauce, to make, you know, tomato sauce, salad dressings, yogurts, um, all kinds of crackers, every kind of bread out there you can't find without sweetness added to it, high fructose corn syrup or sugar, um, and sugar in all its many forms, because manufacturers have gotten pretty crafty at, at um, you know, coming up with different ways to name it so it's not number one on the list. It could be palm sugar, it could be cane, or palm syrup, or you know, cane syrup, or any of these other terms. And so it's just another way to fool us into buying products that are actually not our best health choices. So um, there's sugar, and then there's the very highly refined grains that act the same way on the body and on the bloodstream as um, sugar does. Um, and this is processed sugar. So when sugar is in its natural form, like in fruits or in vegetables that contain sugar, all the fiber and all the you know complex nutrients in it help it to be absorbed in a you know slow and um, healthier metabolic fashion than these refined carbs that are just hitting the bloodstream, spiking your glucose level, and then leaving you with that crash that probably we've all felt before. So essentially this is kind of what I just talked about, but um, leading low on the glycemic index, which is healthy whole foods, <laughs> Um, improves your blood sugar, it stabilizes your, um, you know, your energy, it really is a, kind of a key to, to healthy eating. So I'm going to talk a little bit now less about the, the bad news and more about redefining healthy food. And really the, the whole key is to pay attention to what you're eating. When you pick up a, a package of food, don't pay attention to what it says on the front of the label. Like right here, this says 100% organic and natural, and it very well could be. Or that sauce could be loaded with sugar, and you could put it in the microwave, and the phthalates that Lita mentioned are going to be like released, and all of a sudden and you've got all these endocrine disruptors in your meal. So, you know, the bottom line is, you, you know, stick with whole and, and unprocessed if possible, but when not possible, read the label. So here's like even when we, you know, I'm going to give a few examples right now of things that we might think are healthy. We go to the bakery at Safeway. This is a muffin from the bakery at Safeway. I went into um, to the bakery and, you know, these muffins look pretty healthy. So you're, you want to stop, you're, you know, in a hurry, you want a healthy breakfast. This might be something you pick up. Little would you know, because there's, no, um, there's no label on it, it has 31 grams of sugar. There are four grams to a teaspoon of sugar. Sugar. So that's a heck of a lot of sugar in one little muffin, not to mention the calories and all of the other, 
you know, probably about 30 ingredients in that muffin. So you just can't take anything at face value. You might stop in to um, Subway and think you're getting a good deal with, you know, calorie and health wise with this Subway sweet onion chicken teriyaki sandwich. But, um, you know, just, just the chicken alone, 105 ingredients, and these are just in the chicken alone. Number one, potassium chloride. So back to detoxing, it's not just about sugar, it's not just about fat, it's about toxins and the, the thousands and thousands of chemicals that are in our food system. And, you know, we can't make any assumptions um, the, uh, even the vegetarian roll that I picked up from Safeway as well. This was a veg brown rice vegetarian roll that contains FD&C blue number one, brilliant, brilliant blue, and um, atrazine, which is a carcinogen. I looked it up. <laughs> so just trying to really hammer home the point that just, it happens to me all the time. I know this stuff, and I did, I went into Safeway because I was hungry, and I wanted something good for lunch, and I saw this brown rice vegetarian roll. Didn't read the label till I got home, and I was like, oh, well, at least I'll use it in my slideshow. <laughs> <laughs> so always read the label. And then this is, these are both made by the same company. So one is from New Leaf, and one is from the one from Safeway. The one from New Leaf has nothing except for what you see in the in the package, which is you know carrots, avocado, brown rice, seaweed. They make two different versions. Wow. So yeah, it is so always saying, up to the consumer. It's the same project, product in different packaging. I'm saying it's the same um, manufacturer yeah, or manufacturer. yeah, two different made into two different packages. Yeah. yeah, because probably you know the turnover for that kind of food at New Leaf is probably higher, so they don't need to use as many preservatives in it, and you know. For, for price reasons, for you know freshness reasons, the, the bottom line is you just can't take anything at face value, even at Whole Foods. So um, even John Mackey um, said a lot of interesting things, but one of them <laughs> was that Whole Foods does sell a bunch of junk. So <laughs> He's no longer. Yeah, exactly. So again, this is not just about obesity, this is about Alzheimer's, this is about diabetes, all the diet related diseases that are, you know, attached to this lifestyle. And really what we can do is start really taking charge of our health and taking, um, you know, taking a, a, a real, making a really mindful effort to make sure what we decide to purchase, if it's packaged, we're reading the labels and it's really, you know, what we, what we want to be putting into our body. And really the, 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 big, um, the big things you can do for your health are these. And, um, and I love that you guys are, are really participating in such a holistic program because I think this really, you know, is what this is. So starting with your plate, um, you, this cute little quote from Michael Pollan here, if it came from a plant, eat it. If it was made in a plant, don't. <laughs> so really we want to control our sugar intake, carbohydrate and saturated fat intake because, you know, I don't subscribe to the fact that all carbs are bad or that there's any one specific way to eat for everybody. Um, I know Lita and Michelle and I have had that conversation and really everybody's individual needs are different but the one thing we can say broadly is that processed and prepackaged food are bad for everybody. So really the best thing you can do from my perspective is eat whatever diet you follow. Um, generally the, you know, kind of the, the successful diets or the um, the best diets are the ones that help you control blood pressure and sugar. Um, I, there's a, a study every year uh, from US, U.S. News and World Report, and they do this diet just overview of all the trends. I think it's like the top 30 or 35 diets that are trending that year, and they do this really like 
giant assessment of them where they have all these health experts come in. It's unbiased, it's a review, and they review on a number of different um, criteria. So it's like, are you, you know, interested in weight loss, energy, um, whatever, whatever your criteria are, and they rate them. And so they rate Omni Heart and Dash as, it, and which is really like, you know, not too much different than any of us are saying. It's whole foods, all of these trendy diets, no matter what they are, all say eliminate processed foods. Um, so, so whatever you decide to do, um, you know, you might want to check it out on U.S. News and see see what the experts say. Um, and so then, you know, back to reading the labels. The labels are small, so you might need your reading glasses or a magnifying glass. Um, <laughs> Although they've just been recently redone, and I think one of the, you know, they, they just approved a new nutrition label, and I think one of the things is they are going to be a little bit larger, thank goodness. Um, it, but, you know, they are confusing. They're confusing by design because, you know, manufacturers don't necessarily want these to be easy to read. They don't necessarily want you to know what, what they're putting into these things. So um, uh, a poll found that half of the people polled believe it's easier to do their taxes than to figure out nutrition labels. <laughs> Yet on the upside, women who read nutrition labels weigh an average of eight pounds less than those who don't. So even if you don't understand everything on the label, you'll probably know enough to know if you should put it back if you just start reading it. So I'm not going to get too in depth here on what specifically to look for, but of course, like, you know, with the muffin example, this um, one popular way or one common way that food uh, manufacturers get away with uh, misrepresenting products is to make a serving size half a product. So unrealistic serving sizes. So check your serving sizes. If you're looking at calories and you pick up a bag of chips and it says only, you know, 50 calories per serving, check out the serving size because it could be two chips. <laughs> so you really do have to just, you know, take a look at the basics, take a look at um, how much sugar is in, um, is in the food you're eating. The, the recommended daily allowance of sugar is, I think, something like six grams a day or something. It's, you know, it's quite low. Um, so really as low as possible to the added sugars. If it's over 10 grams, just don't even, don't even go there. Um, unless it's a dessert, you know. So, so it's not all about deprivation. It's about knowing what you're eating and making conscious choices. And if you decide you want to have a dessert, like you, you know, had a brownie out there and, and that, you know, was a choice that you made and it's not processed and it's not full of junk and, you know, someone made, made it themselves, then, you know, make that choice. But the point is just to know what those, be aware and conscious of those choices. And as always, change begins in the brain. Um, so a lot, one of, one of the issues is a lot of us are addicted to sugar. Sugar actually elicits this, um, this dopamine, serotonin, endorphin response. So you're getting more from sugar. sugar so it's not just an accident that sugar was chosen as the thing to like, you know, sprinkle throughout the food system. We like it. It produces a lot of good, positive, you know, short-term changes in our brain, similar to smoking a cigarette or, you know, some other negative health um, or negative behaviors that we do that produce sh short-term positive consequences, short-term, you know, neuro benefits. Um, but essentially, it's about scaling it back changing your diet so that you no longer have those cravings because especially doing a program like this, this is the best thing you can do. Just getting that stuff, detoxifying. When you detoxify from all the other environmental, you know, chemicals and toxins that are just in our environment, you're also detoxifying from sugar, which is huge because a lot of people are addicted to it. So it's a really good thing to kind of get out of your system and then when you start fresh, you'll be ready to, to introduce more healthy whole foods. You'll be ready to get some of the things that you might have been relying on for a little pick-me-up like your you know, mid-morning latte with some sugar in it. You'll be ready to start redefining what, you know, what your mid-morning pickups look like.
to a healthier place. So, okay, so um, yeah, it's eight grams of sugar is the average recommended daily um, allowance, you know, recommended, of course. And these are added sugars. Um, and, you know, like Michelle and Lita said, it's great to keep a food diary because a lot of times you might be, you know, having some unconscious habits in your life that you're not aware of or that are really kind of, that might be triggering some of these um, cravings. And just really looking at those things, looking at what your, your intake is, so you can really decide what you want to change and where to go with that. Um, one of the biggest ways to start, and this is of course after you're off the cleanse, if you have sweetened drinks in your diet, that's where 40% on average of our calories come from. So that's a really great thing. And I'm talking about juice too. Juice it has a tremendous amount of sugar. You're so much better off doing, you know, just whole fruit or, um, you know, maybe even a smoothie where you're just not doing just straight hit of fructose to your bloodstream because um, it does contain a tremendous amount of sugar and you can get the same nutrients from places that will, will create less of a hit on your bloodstream. Um, and then of course, getting rid of the white stuff. So um, refined flours, um, grains behave the same way as sugar. They're car refined carbohydrates and the body sees those and treats them and processes them just like it treats sugar. So when you're going for more of a, a, a product that's closer to its, its natural form, more of a whole food product, um, you know, if you're going to do grains, do the brown rice, do farro, barley. There's so many wonderful whole foods choices, and that's what I talk a lot in my book, Being Delicious Living. It's really about, you know, rediscovering some of these like ancient grains that people have relied upon for many, many years in, in beans and these whole foods that we've kind of forgotten about because they're not sexy, they can't be labeled low fat or gluten free or you know, whatever the new the new trend is. Um, they're just there. And I think people get really swept into what's the latest thing. Um, and, and they forget that you can just go to your bulk bins and for n so much less money than buying prepackaged foods, you can, you know, learn to start trying to use some of these things and just, you won't even believe how easy they are to, um, to cook once you, and, and work into your diet once you, once you become familiar with them. And, you know, of course, one of the great, the great benefits is more energy, um, just, you know, more positivity, less illness, and I'm sure you guys are probably finding that already, the people that have done the cleanse and have been on the challenge, you guys are probably finding so many benefits. Who's experiencing positive benefits of the challenge? Yay, that's awesome. So great. And of course, weight loss, I thought I'd throw a little eye candy up here, <laughs> you know. So, and then, you know, creating an environment for success, because we don't want this to be just a short-term thing. Um, so, and it's, you know, of course, portions are important, but I would say almost secondarily to what is, you know, comprising those portions. And there are a lot of delicious alternatives to processed food. So it really is about not just focusing about getting stuff out of your diet. It's, it's about focusing on trying new things, learning, you know, experiencing new foods and finding new things you love. Because I think when you get out there and really start, you know, thinking a little bit outside the package, um, you know, going through the health, it takes some time, go through the, you know, New Leaf or um, staff of life or whole foods and, and really sit, take some time like in their bulk foods department and you'll see grains and, and interesting things that you haven't tried before um, or beans or you know whatever it is. Take the time to try them and, and you will give yourself the opportunity to discover something really so much easier probably to prepare than you thought and that you might really love. Um, so and then you know start going through your cabinets, fridge and freezer and find out what are you, what have you been using for a really long time that you haven't 
really accurately looked at the layout before. And I will tell you that this is, I've been on this path for years and I'm still learning all the time. And I was under the impression, because it's really easy to be under impressions and not def necessarily question them when they're convenient. So I was under the impression that um, some of the Trader Joe's processed packaged products were healthier than they really are. Like, you know, the spinach lasagna that sounded really healthy. <laughs> All these things, you know, they sound really healthy. If it's a packaged fruit food, no matter how healthy it looks, no matter what store it's from, you know, take a look at the package. And I've had to really, you know, <coughs> look through my freezer and go, oh my God, how could I not have looked, at, how could I not have seen that, you know? So it really is about, about taking the time to look at that stuff. And, and you don't have to do it all at once. You can kind of do it in waves, you know, because really there's a lot of different products you probably rely upon on a daily basis. And to just turn everything upside down all of a sudden might be kind of hard. Although some people do that and that's the way they go cold turkey and that's a really good thing for them but um, you can also just take it a step at a time so you know by introducing things that you know trying new things like beans lentils quinoa um, you know trying these new things and finding new ways to prepare them and learn you know starting to really like them that actually will kind of inspire and motivate you to, to go further so that's a nice way to, to try it and so I have a little homework up here if you want to go to my website there is an interview with this woman Melanie Warner and she wrote this book called Pandora's Lunchbox and I know I've kind of talked about this a lot today but for really this woman was a reporter for like the New York Times and really you know very hugely credentialed reporter and she um, spent about a year behind the scenes really um, you know kind of researching the processed food industry more of as an insider because she was a reporter and some of the things she learned I suggest you just listen to the interview because I think I, I think you'll find it motivating so anyway that's all I've got for today oh it's elizabethborelli.com yes and I hope you'll um, sign up for my newsletter and then you'll you'll get my um, weekly free vegetarian recipes and a lot of health tips and kind of some of the stuff similar to the stuff I've talked about today. Sure. So similarly to the low fat craze that is the gluten free clay craze. And I think that, you know, people who are eating gluten free are, are eating perhaps just as much processed foods. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, and I, I know that because um, it was recommended for my son that he eat gluten free mm -hmm. for an immune um, deficiency problem that he had. And we all, you know, we're out trying to find the best, you know, foods, and we all got fat. Yeah. Well, you know? yeah. <laughs> Some of, some of that stuff, and there is another, yeah, there's another interview on my website, too, with Dr. Catherine Reed, and she talks a lot about that. Uh -huh. You have to be very careful, because she is gluten-free, but a lot of the gluten-free, that was a very good point, thank you, a lot of the gluten-free products on the market are highly processed. Udi's bread, that is, it's, if you look at the um, ingredients list on that, it's about 50 things long. Just because it's gluten free, so that's just another health claim that manufacturers know people are responding to. Oh, gluten free is the new trend. So, you know, they're putting gluten free on everything, even things that never had gluten to begin with, because they know people want to see that. It's actually called, there's a term for it, it's called the health halo. So, when they can put these health claims on products, it makes them sound healthier than they really are. And a lot of the um, gluten free products are highly processed. Did anyone else have any questions? Oh. <laughs> Thank you. you could, does anyone have another question? Because Elizabeth will be here for a few minutes after. She also has her cookbooks for sale. Uh -huh. How much are your cookbooks? $20. $20 for the cookbooks. I and have one, and it's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> So we haven't talked about gluten, we haven't talked about GMOs, we haven't talked about MSG. You know, MSG has 500 different labels. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things that we haven't talked about yet. We will. We'll get there. Mm -hmm. We don't want to bombard you too much in this health lecture. This is a lot of information, a lot to mm -hmm. cover to get healthy. Um, over the 12 weeks, hopefully we will have, you know, briefly touched upon certain things. And then when you want to go deeper in an area that you just don't know about, want to get educated, want to get empowered, want to make a change in that area, 
you can. You know, um, we can we can talk about anything in depth, but right now the health lectures are more of an overview. And then when you when you individually want to make some changes and go deeper, I definitely recommend you meeting with any of our health lectures, of course, one on one. You know, Dr. Bean or myself. You know. Or, or let us um, know what you want. We'll direct you to how to go deeper in that area, okay? Because it's, it's, there's, there's, there's a lot going on right now in the world. Mm-hmm. Yay. Mm-hmm.